So we, this happened in order for manifestation to happen. The, the contraction happened so manifestation could y happen. Yes. Why are we all trying to get back if we if we're here to manifest? It seems, and then we spend all our time trying to get back to unlimited or unveiled consciousness. Because the, the veiling of itself is the price consciousness pays for manifestation. Consciousness has to consent to veil itself with its own activity in order to manifest its infinite potential. But in veiling itself from itself, it, it veils its innate sense of fulfillment. And therefore this this veiling, that the separate self, feels a sense of lack, feels an absence, feels disturbed, feels separate and therefore unloved or unloving. So it, it is innate in the separate self. The separate self, I'm sure you've heard me say it before, the separate self is like a, 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 a rubber ball that has been squashed. The rubber ball is, is not in a state of equilibrium. There's no such thing as a, as a compressed rubber ball that is in a state of equilibrium. The rubber ball is, is by definition tending to return to its natural condition. The separate self is like a contracted ball of, of consciousness uh, with limited love, limited, limited freedom, limited fulfillment, limited peace. And therefore the separate self, everything the separate self does, it, it, it is its nature to, it cannot help but want to go back to its natural condition. It is just the natural condition of the separate self. Okay, so that's a condition of the separate self, not of the finite mind. Well, in this... Um, yes, yeah, in the separate self. Very often I use them synonymously. But they're not... We're, the finite mind is, is fine, that's just how we manifest and we... Th did this th manifest. That's true. The, 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 the separate self is a finite... Uh, we could say we could say this the separate self is a finite mind that believes it is a finite mind right but in the absence of that belief there is still the finite mind finite experience but it is no longer attributed to a separate self we realize that the the the, the reality of what we are is infinite consciousness in other words, let's take uh, Ramana Maharshi as, as a, um, a symbol of a, a person in whom there was no belief or feeling of being a separate self. Nevertheless, he still saw his experience from the perspective of his body. And when he was in his bedroom in, in, in um, Sri Ramanashram, he was not seeing the streets of London. His, his, his vision, his, his experience was limited, so he, he was experiencing finite experience from his located perspective. That's what I call the finite mind. But in him, the, the mind inside the finite mind was unlimited, like the space in this room. It, there was no personal sense of self there. But, but nevertheless, he still had finite experience. So he was a finite mind with no separate self. A finite mind, yes, in which, which, which knew its reality, true self, which didn't believe, I am a finite mind or a separate self. He realized that the activity of thinking and perceiving, which was his experience, was simply the activity of infinite consciousness. There was no, he didn't take this activity as an entity. The finite mind as an activity is not a problem. The Ramana Maharshi, the Buddha, they all experienced thinking, sensing, perceiving. As an activity, the finite mind is not a problem. It's when the finite mind seems to become an entity, a self unto itself. That is the separate self. The finite mind's belief that it is a, a separate self. So the impulse, the rubber ball impulse to return, that's the separate self driving that. Ramana Maharshi didn't have that impulse he was ex exactly there. yes because he knew that the, he knew that what he called his self his experience of himself was awareness's experience of itself 
So there was no sense of limitation in him. In, in other words, the self in him was the self of awareness. And with that came its innate peace and fulfillment. So, so yes, there was no, the, the analogy of the rubber ball breaks down a bit here. Let's, um, let's go to King Lear and, and um, John Smith. King Lear is the activity of John Smith. As the activity of John Smith, there's nothing wrong with the, the play, King Lear's play. But if King Lear, that is the activity of John Smith, believes that he is a person in his own right, in other words, if he forgets that he is the activity of John Smith and King, King Lear feels, I am King Lear, then his, all his problems begin. But um, if during the activity of, of the play, John Smith knows who he is, he doesn't forget himself as he's playing the role of King Lear, then King Lear, the play still goes on. King Lear still has a relationship with his daughters. He still goes to war with the French. He still runs his kingdom. But he doesn't suffer. He's not, in other words, he's not seeking happiness because John Smith hasn't overlooked his true nature. So Ramana Maharshi was like John Smith playing the part of King Lear without forgetting that he is John Smith. Got it. Thank you. And why, you know, pretty much all of us got fooled into believing we're a separate self. So we contract as a fi into a finite mind to manifest, and that's, there's no problem with the finite mind, and then we all make this erroneous leap to we're a separate self. Why? That seems like a bug. Well, but because, uh, 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 because uh, uh, in order for in other words, why don't we, um, why don't we, why are we not born kind of um, lucid waking? Why do we have to, why couldn't we just remember that we are John Smith all the way through? Um, it, 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 it's because awareness has to forget itself to appear finite. The, the, your own mind at night has to fall asleep in order to have a dream. Because your mind has to forget that it is your mind. It has to enter into the dream. It's only from the perspective of the dream that it can see the dreamed world. This is the, this is the price your mind pays for the Carib dream of the Caribbean beach. Your mind forgets that it is asleep peacefully in Burlingame and it localizes itself on the Caribbean beach and suffers, enjoys and suffers the experience on the Caribbean beach accordingly. It, it, it's, it's, the, it, it's the mechanism of creation. I get the forgetting piece makes sense. Why making the leap to we're a separate self on top of that. Why can't we just well, be a... Because the forgetting, the, the, the forgetting... Is what causes a separate self. The, the forgetting is the separate self. We forget that we are infinite, in other words, that, that our being is shared, okay. and we believe that we are a, a separate self, a, a, a finite self, a, a, an isolated self. And, that we, we, and as a result, we feel that the self in me is completely distinct from the self in you. It's like believing that the space in this room is completely different from the space in your bedroom here. That's what most people feel. The self in me is completely set, separate from the self in you. And as a result, we feel this self is limited. And because of this limit, it's like a, there is a limit of... We feel that the self is, is a fragment um, because the self feels that it is a fragment, it is always trying to complete itself through the acquisition of objects and substances and relationships. And because the self feels that it is a fragment, it feels vulnerable. Something can harm me. So, so these are the two primary um, modes of behavior of, of the separate self, trying to complete itself or fulfill itself through the acquisition of objects, sub substances, relationships, and trying to defend itself, trying to defend its its identity.